Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. <laughs> Melissa McCarthy is one of our best and filthiest comic actresses working today. So can someone explain to me just what the heck happened with the boss? This movie is wildly uneven, and I don't just mean in terms of laughs, which are very hit and miss. I'm talking about the characters, the internal logic of the story, the relationships. None of it makes any sense or stays consistent from scene to scene. The litmus test of comedies is laughter, and I can admit I laughed hard a few times. Other times I sort of half laughed, half groaned, but mostly I just sat in silence just sort of baffled by it all. So baffled that I am convinced that there must be two or three other movies worth of material left on the cutting room floor that someone can assemble into something more consistent. But that would mean that this movie was worth the time and trouble to save. And for the most part, the boss is just as thoroughly unpleasant and mean-spirited as its title character. That's it for the capsule review. Now let's get in depth. Okay, here's the setup. Melissa McCarthy plays a rich celebrity business mogul named Michelle Darnell, and Kristen Bell is her beleaguered single mom assistant, Claire. When Darnell goes to jail for five months for insider trading, she loses everything and must crash on the couch of her former employee. When the former titan of industry, who has never had a family of her own, gets close to Claire's daughter and attends a dandelions meeting, basically just think the Girl Scouts, she sees a way to get back on top by starting her own, uh, non-profit or semi-non-profit that she tries to make a profit on, I think. It's all a little muddled for me. The whole thing's a little muddled. Much is made of Darnell's inability to be placed with an adoptive family as a child, but then we meet a former mentor slash mother figure played by Kathy Bates, and that plot goes nowhere. Darnell is shown cozying up to Claire's family and starting the business venture. But the specifics of the business plan don't seem to add up at all. They're going to sell brownies instead of cookies, baked by Claire from her own secret recipe. Then they go into business together, but with no business plan or paperwork. And then after a completely random meltdown, Claire gets screwed over in a way that, uh, I don't really think is possible considering that she has the recipe, I don't know. A movie, even one played for laughs, has a responsibility to make its internal logic clear. Otherwise, the audience is so focused on understanding the plot, you'll miss the jokes. But this movie is cobbled together so haphazardly, it's difficult to get your bearings enough to laugh at anything but the most base and crude humor. Like, for example, whenever McCarthy has a chance to run her potty mouth, her greatest comedic asset, or the big gang fight between rival Girl Scout troops as glimpsed in the movie's trailer, Burnt. At first, I was turned off by the movie just because it was clearly mean-spirited. I mean, I chuckled at some of the crudeness, but I knew in my heart that they were cheap laughs. And then I saw attempts to inject heart into the story that were just bungled a bit by tonal inconsistencies. But eventually, it became clear that nothing in this film was consistent. The relationships between the main characters, Darnell and Claire, and the other minor characters like a rival dandelion mom or Claire's boss or Claire's love interest, they change from scene to scene depending on the needs of the story. I don't understand how a woman who built an empire off of teaching people how to sell and manipulate other people has such a difficult time persuading her former assistant to let her crash on the couch. And I still haven't even gotten yet to Peter Dinklage's character because to be honest, he seems like he's been imported from a completely different, more cartoonish movie. And the entire third act of the movie, rather than being about healing the relationship between Darnell and Claire's family, instead revolves around the silly heist in an attempt to steal a bit of paperwork from the office of Dinklage's character. Paperwork that shouldn't be there, probably isn't valid anyway, and makes no earthly sense for them to try and steal. And this movie, which ostensibly is about the emotional journey of the boss character and the importance of family over material wealth as these movies tend to go, instead wraps up with a ludicrously staged sword fight 
on a rooftop between two business rivals, one of whom is trying to steal and destroy a document. Never mind that they're on a rooftop and she could just throw the document off the roof and the problem is solved. Never mind that the document in question would never stand up to any scrutiny in court. Never mind that the relationship between Darnell and Dinklage's character is not what the movie is about. The worst part about this entire heist third act is that it is woefully unfunny and tone deaf as to who its characters are. I award the boss a small bag of popcorn. I must admit to laughing at a few of the early gags. I challenge you not to laugh at Melissa McCarthy getting flipped into a wall by a fold-out couch. This is so bad. No! Oh God! Oh God! <laughs> See, I know you laughed. You probably don't feel very proud of it, but you did. But I didn't laugh nearly enough, and I couldn't enjoy the time between the laughs because it seems quite clear that the filmmakers don't know who these characters are, how they should relate to each other throughout the course of the story, or even how basic things like jail, contracts, business, or baking brownies actually work. That does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter at Movies That Pop, and click the icon right down there to visit our channel. You'll be able to view all of our other videos and more importantly, click subscribe so we can keep doing what we do. In the meantime, leave your comments below and click the thumbs up if you like what you heard. Thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel and woo, this batch is burnt, baby. <laughs>